Welcome, you're tuned into Tangled Threads. If you're digging our content, hit the like button and subscribe. Thank you. Ah, geez, where do I even begin? It's like one of those slow motion train wrecks, you know? You can see it coming from miles away, but you're powerless to stop it. So, yeah, I'm Mike. Just your average guy trying to get through life without any major drama. And then out of the blue, I start getting these little hints, these subtle nudges that something's not quite right in my little slice of domestic bliss. It all started innocently enough. A whispered phone call here, a hurried text message there. I'd walk into a room and suddenly the conversation would hush up, like a bunch of school kids caught passing notes. Hell, even the cat seemed to give me those side-eye glances like it knew something I didn't. But you know, I chalked it up to paranoia at first. I mean, who jumps to the conclusion that their wife's stepping out on them? Not me, no way. But then, the clues started getting bolder. I'd find her phone tucked away, screened down like she was guarding Fort Knox. Passwords changed, notifications silenced. And the kicker? The perfume. That unmistakable scent that lingered in the air long after she'd left the room. The scent that wasn't mine. Hey Lisa, I'd say, trying to sound casual as hell. New perfume? She'd laugh it off, of course. Oh, you know, just felt like trying something different. Different, my ass. It was like watching a magician perform a trick right in front of you, and you're supposed to pretend you don't see the rabbit up his sleeve. But I played along, because that's what you do, right? You try to keep the peace. Avoid the drama. I'd catch her staring into the distance, a far-off look in her eyes. And every time I asked what was on her mind, she'd just shake her head and smile that mysterious smile, like she was holding onto a secret that was just for her. And maybe it was. Maybe it had nothing to do with me, but man, the doubt, the gnawing suspicion, it was eating me alive. It was like a puzzle. A goddamn infuriating puzzle. I'd find receipts for dinners that didn't involve me, and her explanations would be just vague enough to drive me nuts. Oh, that was just a work thing, she'd say, her voice all nonchalant. Yeah? Since when does your boss start paying for romantic candlelit dinners? She'd laugh again, that tinkling sound that used to make my heart skip a beat. Now it just made my blood boil. And then there were the late nights. The times when she'd suddenly have to work late or go out with her friends. Nights when she'd come home with that guilty expression, like a kid caught with their hand in the cookie jar. Traffic was just insane, she'd say, her voice all breathless like she'd been running a marathon. In traffic, huh? At midnight? But like an idiot, I'd let it slide. I'd swallow my suspicions and bury them deep, because I loved her, damn it. I wanted to believe that everything was fine, that I was just letting my imagination run wild. But you can only ignore that itch at the back of your mind for so long. And eventually, the whispers of doubt grew into a full-blown roar that I just couldn't ignore anymore. So, yeah, that's where it all began. The first chapter in this wild ride that would change my life forever. And if you think this is where it ends, well, buckle up, because things are about to get a whole lot crazier. So there I was stuck in this swirling vortex of suspicion and doubt. The pieces of the puzzle were scattered all around me, taunting me with their hidden meanings. I couldn't shake the feeling that something was seriously off, that my world was slowly unraveling before my eyes. But I was determined to get to the bottom of it, to uncover the truth, no matter how much it stung. I started doing my own detective work, like some kind of bargain bin Sherlock Holmes. I'd discreetly check her phone when she wasn't looking, scanning through messages and call logs for any sign of the mysterious other guy. I even turned into a master of disguise, lurking in the shadows as I followed her on her suspicious outings. Yeah, I know it sounds insane, but desperation does weird things to a man. One evening, as the sun dipped below the horizon, casting long shadows across our town, I decided to follow her. I felt like a damn stalker, but my anger and frustration outweighed any sense of shame. She drove to the edge of our city park, an area secluded from the prying eyes of passers-by. My heart raced as I watched her disappear into the darkness with a man I'd never seen before. This was it, the moment of truth. I parked my car a safe distance away and crept closer, my footsteps muffled by the damp grass. My pulse quickened, my fists clenched, and I felt a surge of adrenaline coursing through my veins. And there they were, wrapped in each other's arms oblivious to the world around them. I watched, my anger growing with each stolen kiss, each whispered promise. They thought they were invincible, untouchable in their secret haven. 
Little did they know, I was about to turn their little fantasy world upside down. As they embraced, lost in their lustful haze, I made my move. Like a phantom, I slipped past them and into their hiding spot. My heart pounded in my chest as I rifled through their belongings, finding their clothes, their phones, and their car keys. A wicked grin spread across my face, a sense of twisted satisfaction taking hold. With their possessions in hand, I retreated into the shadows, leaving them none the wiser. It was a cold, calculated move, a fitting punishment for the pain they'd caused me. I pictured them stumbling out of their hideaway, realizing they were stranded, naked, and vulnerable. I made my way back to my car, a rush of triumph coursing through my veins. The drive home felt like a movie scene, the radio blaring some classic rock tune that perfectly matched the roller coaster of emotions coursing through my veins. I couldn't help but chuckle to myself, a dark sense of satisfaction bubbling up from within. They say revenge is a dish best served cold, but in that moment, it felt piping hot and delicious. I drove around about three hours before going home, allowing enough time for my naked wife to return. As I pulled into our driveway, a rush of nerves hit me like a ton of bricks. What was I going to say? How would I confront Lisa about what I had just witnessed? I knew there was no turning back, no way to sweep this under the rug like all those tiny clues before. I took a deep breath, mustered all the courage I could find, and walked through the front door. Hey Mike, Lisa called out from the living room, her voice tinged with surprise at my unexpected return. She glanced up, her eyes widening as she took in my expression. Is everything okay? I didn't waste any time. I dropped their belongings on the coffee table with a satisfying thud, each item a damning piece of evidence that told a story she couldn't deny. She looked from the pile of clothes to my face, her cheeks paling as realization dawned on her. What, what is this? She stammered, her voice barely above a whisper. So we went our separate ways, the love that had once bound us now a distant memory. The divorce was swift, like ripping off a band-aid, painful but necessary. We divided our possessions, signed the papers, and that was that. The life we had built together was reduced to a legal document and a handful of bittersweet memories. But you know what they say about karma, right? Well, turns out it's a feisty little devil that's always lurking around the corner. And in this twisted tale, it wasn't just me who was dealt a dose of cosmic justice. Word got out, as it often does in small towns, and the fallout was swift. Lisa's affair partner, Mark, faced the music as his own life unraveled. I could practically hear the echoes of his conversation with his wife as the truth came crashing down around him. The domino effect was in full swing, two marriages crumbling like a house of cards. The fallout was swift and explosive, their lives unraveled in a blaze of scandal and shame. Divorce followed, just like it had for us, leaving a trail of broken dreams and shattered hearts in its wake. As the dust settled and the ink dried on our divorce papers, I couldn't help but reflect on the absurdity of it all. Who would have thought that a simple man like me, living a seemingly ordinary life, could be thrust into a whirlwind of drama and revenge? It wasn't over fast enough for me. But you know what? Through it all, I found a new sense of strength, a resilience I never knew I had. The betrayal, the heartbreak, it all became the catalyst for a journey of self-discovery and growth. I embraced life anew, determined to build something better, something authentic and true. And as I sit here now, recounting this wild saga that unfolded in the twists and turns of my life, I can't help but reflect on the lessons I've learned. Revenge may offer a fleeting sense of satisfaction, but it's the journey toward healing and self-discovery that truly matters. Life is messy, unpredictable, and at times downright cruel. But it's also beautiful, full of second chances and opportunities for growth. So there you have it, the story of Mike, the guy who went from a jilted husband to a survivor, a man who found his strength in the chaos and emerged on the other side, battered but unbroken. And as I move forward, embracing the unknown with a newfound sense of courage, I can't help but feel a glimmer of hope for what lies ahead. Did I take it too far? What would you have done in this situation? Let us know in the comments section below. Hey guys, I know I don't usually talk to the audience much on here, but I wanted to say thank you to everyone for their support on this channel. I've had a fun time running this channel, and I can't wait to see what the future holds for it. See you guys. When you subscribe, be sure to click the notification bell. Click here for more Tangled Threads.